are bringing in a planetary world government. And they're at war with logic because logic would state that an unelected world government is anathema to a free society, would be the enemy of free people. So to be able to complete this takeover, they are at war with language. They are at war with mathematics. They are at war with the simple maxim that two plus two equals four, literally with Common Core. And that's why when we saw a bomb go off in New York City in Chelsea and a bomb go off in New Jersey yesterday along a military parade route, we saw Hillary Clinton come out and say, this is not a bombing. Bombs going off are not bombings, even as ISIS celebrates New York City dumpster bomb and all up mall stabbings in Minnesota, there will be more. Nine people at the hospital, three still in critical condition. The stories are all up on Infowars.com, PrisonPlanet.com, and of course, DrudgeReport.com. I have stacks of the news right here where I'm supposed to sit here and just debate Hillary Clinton, who came out and says in a press conference, uh, well, a very short press statement, I should say, because their stamina is just a few minutes, that, well, we've had a bombing, and it's improper for Donald Trump to call it a bombing. So that story is up on Infowars.com. Hillary Clinton says bombings in New York. 40 seconds later, criticizes use of word bombing and says that Donald Trump uh, is basically compulsive. Uh, no, he's not compulsive. He's decisive. And let me tell you something. It's decisive. If you're standing on a street corner and a city bus runs over somebody and kills them, say a bus just ran over somebody. Or if there's a house fire and a house burns down, to say that the house burned down. You can be decisive, you know, when the sun comes up in the morning at 7 a.m. and say, that's the sun. It just came up. We don't need Hillary to tell us it did. It's not compulsive. That was her term. Uh, it is decisive. But uh, this is the mind control we deal with. I have stacks of news articles with corporate controlled media criticizing Trump for calling Two different bombings yesterday in New Jersey and New York, clearly targeting the military in New York on a Marine Corps jogging route, a race that was about to happen. And the fact that they will sit there and turn the story into a debate on whether or not it's terrorism when ISIS has taken responsibility yesterday and they officially took responsibility today. Trump and Clinton battle over what terms should be used. This is how they paralyze us. This is how they manipulate us. Remember how they kept calling the attack in Nice that killed, was it 90-something people a few months ago? They called it a truck attack. A truck attack. It'd be like if I stabbed someone with a butcher knife, they'd say the knife attacked. Media blames truck, not terrorists or Islam for an East attack. This is an example of mind control. Then I see comments on Infowars and other sites like YouTube saying, Jones is, you know, saying this is an Islamic attack. Why? It's probably a false flag. When there's a false flag, when clearly governments have been involved and have been caught before, provocateur events, we cover that. Islamic State is the mega false flag with Obama and Hillary and NATO and the globalists with Saudi Arabia turning loose a jihad army worldwide, flooding Europe and the U.S. with refugees and admitting in Soros' own memos that have been out for weeks in emails, years after I told you. See, we can look at it and tell you what it is. It's very clear. It's not rocket science that they're bringing in the Islamists to create a civil emergency, martial law, so the state can come in and take all of our rights, countering the threat they've brought in. So it's an intensification of the false flags we saw in 2001 and on, and they're run by the globalists. Stay with us, it's an important broadcast. Before I plow into all this news, I want to air a three-minute piece by one of our great reporters, Paul Joseph Watson, that he filed today dealing with the bombings, the dual bombings in New Jersey and New York yesterday. Because we've got Hillary Clinton and the mainstream media out saying don't call it a bombing and criticizing Donald Trump for saying that. And, and I'm going to play the clip of Hillary actually saying that after she says in a 40 second clip 
We've had a bombing, and it's not good for Donald Trump to refer to these events as bombings. So it's all about how they control the language. Don't use the word mother and father on high school or elementary school uh, entrance uh, paperwork because someone might not have children or might not have parents. And if you don't have parents, it's hurtful to hear someone else doesn't. It's all about controlling the language, telling you what words to use. This is cult level. They've brought in the Islamicists. They brought in the refugees in mass. These are people from the most war-torn areas that are so whacked out on Sunni, uh, Wahhabist, Saudi Arabian-funded Orthodox Islam, the most hardcore type, that they're constantly killing each other no matter what country they're in. I mean, you, bombings every day in every city, stabbings every day, shootings every day because a woman was caught wearing purple socks or uh, somebody, you know, didn't bow perfectly right, uh, you know, five times a day and somebody saw them. I mean, this is like living in a giant brainwashing cult. The left brings it into being uh, totally incompatible. We have now in the last two weeks the latest George Soros emails uh, via DC leaks, WikiLeaks, and others, thousands of emails where he's talking about, we're gonna bring in the Islamicist. We're gonna make women accept Sharia law. Uh, it'll cause such a crisis that we'll have a new voting block that we can activate to basically engage in destabilization anytime we want. Now, obviously, I've been telling you this for years you, because you could watch what Soros has done in the Middle East, Ukraine, uh, Asia, you name it. He destabilizes countries. But now we have the very emails where he admits that he's funding Black Lives Matter and other groups that are calling for violence to create a civil war in America. Al Gore three years ago called for a, quote, Arab Spring in America. And I, when I thought, saw that quote, I thought, oh, oh, he means liberals running around burning stuff down. No, he means even bringing in the Muslims to do it. It's unprecedented. So we have the frightening similarities between the Manhattan dumpster explosion that hurt 29 and the New Jersey military run blast. Oh, somebody tries to blow up a Marine Corps event and you don't even call it a bomb. And then ISIS takes responsibility. Meanwhile, ISIS has taken responsibility for nine stabs, three in critical condition at Minnesota Mall, as the man screamed, Allah Akbar, God is great, and then would ask people, are you a Muslim? If they said no, gah, butcher knife. Yeah, butcher knife. But it's not Islamic related. These happen every week. We, uh, there's been more events in the UK, more events in Germany, more rapes, more murders, because we're not seen as human by Muslims. Now, I've explained this. Most Muslims are what you call heretics to Islam and don't want to live like this, that previously came to the West. But we're getting the Sunni Wahhabist people now. Okay, we're getting the hardcore ones that, by the way, are the majority of Islam. 80% of Islam is Sunni, and the group that bullies and controls the Sunnis and tries to keep them in line is the Wahhabist out of Saudi Arabia. That's who's funding all of this right now. And our criminal government, as well as NATO, has publicly allied with these people to bring them in to be our new bosses. Total red carpets. For three years, at least three years, the Homeland Security is not even allowed to list a bombing or an attack as Islamic or as a bombing or as Muslim. Even when they confess and say, it is for God, it is for God, I'm going to kill you, I'm going to kill you, it is for God. Police, man stabs not at Minnesota Mall before cop kills him. But of course, if you read uh, deeply the article, then it says, reportedly mentioning Allah and asking victims as he stabbed them, but it's not terror related. Reuters, Islamic State says Minnesota Mall stabbing carried out by a soldier. We're going to continue, but don't worry, Hillary said it's not, okay, because she loves you and uh, cares so much about you. Let's continue um, with these reports here. The authorities are looking into whether the New York explosion was connected to a blast that happened 11 hours earlier when an improvised device exploded, a pressure cooker, in a garbage can near the course of a charity race for injured Marines. Continuing, ISIS supporters rush to celebrate an NYC explosion. We cause you this pain inside your house. Manhattan explosion timeline, second device. Again, pressure cooker. There will be more chilling 911 call after the Chelsea explosion. 
but it's not connected to Islam. ISIS, says the left, that's the group that has literally nothing to do with Islam. 29 injured in an improvised explosive device. New York City Bill de Blasso mayor calls the incident an intentional act. Really, it's an intentional, an intentional act. Again, ISIS supporters rush to celebrate the explosion. Now, before, and of course they found some other bombs as well that didn't go off. But before I get into more of this, I want to play a short clip by Paul Joseph Watson where he talks about the truth about the New York and New Jersey bombings. Here it is. And a then bomb we're in a dumpster exploded in New York's Chelsea neighborhood, injuring 29 people. A pressure cooker bomb with wires sticking out, a cell phone, and a written note was also found nearby. A pipe bomb in a garbage can also exploded in New Jersey during a marathon in aid of military soldiers and veterans. And a man screaming about Allah went on a stabbing rampage in Minnesota, asking people if they were Muslim during the attack. Which, of course, is... Nothing to do with Islam. The terrorist was shot dead by a responsible person with a gun. Not a narrative the establishment is keen to see gain traction. Despite all of the attacks clearly having the hallmarks of terrorism, the media and authorities rushed to move the narrative away from terrorism. That there is no evidence at this point of a terror connection to this incident. So it's intentional. There's a handwritten note. There's a pressure cooker bomb nearby. But this isn't terrorism. Give me a break. I mean, are they going to blame the attack on a trash can like they blamed the Nice attack on a truck? They're playing politics and lying to the people of New York so that this doesn't hurt Hillary in the polls. After Hillary Clinton called the incident a bombing, the Clinton mouthpiece media then slammed Donald Trump for calling the incident a bombing. I've been briefed uh, about the bombings in New York and New Jersey. Secretary, do you have any reaction to the fact that Donald Trump immediately upon taking the stage tonight called the explosion in New York a bomb? Bombings in New York. Bombings, bombings, bombings. News outlets like Channel 4 also edited out Hillary calling it a bombing in order to make her look more reasonable than Trump. Other prostitutes said Trump was reckless and irresponsible for telling a crowd that a bomb had gone off in New York, even though that was completely accurate since a bomb had gone off in New York. Someone claiming to be the New York bomber wrote a Tumblr blog saying he was a Trump-hating social justice warrior and that the attack was a response to racist, misogynistic, Islamophobic, cisgendered, privileged white people. Could this be another example of a crazed leftist going jihad in the same vein as the Black Lives Matter inspired shooter who murdered cops in Dallas? We await more details, but whoever the culprit, the media and the establishment will do everything in their power to hijack the narrative. Terror attacks by the same fringe groups, whether they be Islamist, leftist or Black Lives Matter radicals, that Hillary has embraced will only drive more support to Trump. That's why the media and the establishment will continue to obfuscate the truth behind these incidents with bizarre rhetoric and contrived narratives in a desperate effort to deceive the American people. Well said, Paul Watson, that video, if you want to share it, in the InfoWars is on InfoWars.com right now on PrisonButter.com. Now, now think about this. Hillary says it's a bombing, and then we're going to play the full clip. 40 seconds later, criticizes Trump for saying bombing. This is 1984-level brainwashing. I'm Alex Jones. Stay with us. We are back live, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining us on this Sunday edition. Already the 18th day of September 2016. I am your host, Alex Jones. I want to give you some of the good news here, but I'll be honest with everybody. It really freaks me out to see ABC, NBC, CBS, every major channel there is that is an establishment media get up there and do things like not use the word terrorist now and there's terror attacks or not call a bombing a bombing and to not call major terror attacks in Europe or the Middle East Islamic attacks. Because if they can set the precedent to basically cover up for that group, they can do it for anybody. And it shows the lockstep control 
decades ago, people noticed that ABC, CBS, NBC had the same ads in the same order during the breaks and the same stories in the same order during the shows. Almost every night, you could flip to the channels. When I was a teenager, when I was a kid, when I was a young adult, it was like, same story, same story, same story, same talking points, because talking points were coming out of Washington. And it's now admitted those talking points come now directly out of the Democratic Party. It was bad enough to have the CIA and the White House directing media. That's totally criminal. Now it's the Democratic Party, even when Republicans are out of power, that are directing everything because they took over the shadow government. They set up a COG, a continuity of government system. They established the NSA spy grid. They put the control systems in. And once they had control, they just took the data and placed it on all their own private computers and servers. And they run it all. The spy grids, the blackmail grids, everything. And that's why they're so arrogant. It's why the media follows their orders. It's why things are so scary. Because they have surveillance technology 10,000 times what Hitler ever dreamed of. And when I say 10,000 times, I almost said 10 billion times. Because when you think about the level of surveillance that 16 intelligence agencies have over the American people, they spy on the U.S. as much as they spy on all other countries combined. That's been declassified. They can go right into your computer and watch you over your phone, right over uh, your video cam. I told people that 20 years ago because I talked to NSA whistleblowers then. And now you go see the movie Snowden, which I saw last night. It is undoubtedly the greatest work by Oliver Stone. It is incredibly accurate, and I cannot believe that that film came out. Knowing how controlled Hollywood the media is, it's, it's amazing. In fact, I'm going to review it off the cuff later today, but I'm going to do a really focused review that's produced with clips and, 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 and documentation later this week. I have no connection to the film, but I'm telling you, I'm telling you, this is incredible. You know, I think the establishment let this come out because they think the people are too stupid to even know what they're watching. They admit in the film that for decades, chips have been sold and computer programs have been loaded on to... General Electric and IBM and Microsoft and Dell and all U.S. manufacturers, Cisco, you name it, kill switches in the Swiss, the Japanese, uh, the South Africans, every country. Kill switches in their dams, kill switches in their light poles, kill switches in their power plants, kill switches in your toasters now, kill switches in your smart meter. And, of course, people that are our listeners have heard this for 18 years. I mean, I've known about this for 18 years. But I cannot believe it was on the show. It was in the two-hour movie. My mouth was hanging open. And then to show, I don't, I don't follow pop culture. I should follow more because that's where the real war is going on. I'm like, did they clone Clint Eastwood? There's a young Clint Eastwood. That, that's like Rowdy Yates from Rawhide. My mom was watching when she was five years old. That guy looks just like uh, Clint Eastwood, and I don't follow Clint Eastwood. I mean, I follow his movies. I like the guy, but I don't, I'm not in love with Hollywood stars, but he's like a member of the family. I mean, it feels like that when you've been you know, liking somebody since you were a little kid. And I'm like, that looks like Clint Eastwood. So when I leave, I Google it, and it's his, it's his youngest son that looks just like him is in the movie. I was just like, that guy looks like Clint Eastwood. Crazy. People say, well, I don't know about Clint Eastwood. That's a young guy. Look at a young Clint Eastwood and then look at uh, Scott Eastwood. It's incredible. But getting off all of that, I've got to write some notes up because I don't want to drop the ball on a review of this. I mean, it was amazing. They were just admitting everything but one omission. One big omission. And it's probably because the public couldn't handle it. When I was told this by NSA whistleblowers 20 years ago, 18 years ago, 15 years ago, when people would tell me I was doing you know, radio remotes at a car show or the rodeo, or I'd be at, at a book signing or video signing at a movie theater, and they'd meet me in the parking garage and, and you know give me data dossiers. 
of stuff that, of course, I burned or shredded. And I was showing my dad. My dad's like, you got to destroy this. And it was just how the whole thing works. Top engineers came to me and explained that it was to see over the horizon with enough human activity, with billions of people's actions a, a minute, they can predict the future with mass movements. And I never even really talked about that because it was so crazy. I talked about there's keywords just like Google. Uh, it searches the the real Internet, which is digital communications. Uh, the Internet is just a, you know kind of one public version, a limited system where you make things public if you choose. But the NSA searches the real Internet that is digital telecommunications. And I explained it all. First show ever. I mean, we had James Bamford on. Uh, we had uh, so many other big whistleblowers on, like Wayne Madsen. And, of course, we've had the former head of the NSA technical, uh, William Benny, in studio. Oh, by the way, uh, Nick Cage plays him in the movie. See, I'm kind of already reviewing it. That's why it was so mind-blowing. The only other time I experienced something like this was watching Kill the Messenger. That came out a few years ago about, about the murder of investigative journalist Gary Webb, who exposed CIA drug dealing. Since then, it's been declassified. He's been totally vindicated. I knew Gary Webb pretty good. I knew Free Rick Ross. I knew a lot of the folks involved. Because back then, I was the only type of show that would have them on once the discrediting started, you see. All the establishment media that everybody wants to be on, why everybody begs to be friends with it while it stabs you in the back. You know, don't, don't go on cutting edge, Alex Jones. No, 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 no. But I was watching the movie. And quite frankly, getting nauseous, though, feeling sorry for Gary Webb and how he was murdered. But with this film, it's different because it's triumphant and it's incredible. But the only thing they don't cover is that the real final use is not just blackmail, not just control, not just being able to shut down the grids in any nation you want any time. That's all important. That's penultimate. The, the top of the pyramid, the summit, is being able to get enough data to predict the future with total accuracy and mass movement. But then with that control, you can add stimuli and start controlling the future. We'll be back. I'm Alex Jones. This is InfoWar. So 20 years ago, I had James Bamford, who was the former Nightline executive producer on, who talked to NSA whistleblowers and who wrote several books about the NSA. And then because I had him on, I started getting sent more packages of information. I started getting contacted. But I exposed that the Scientific Atlantic cable boxes 18 years ago had cameras and microphones in them in Austin. Uh, that's when I really started getting the data dumps. And it just got crazier and crazier from then. And then, of course, one of the biggest whistleblowers ever is a fellow that actually works for InfoWars, and that's Wayne Madsen, who's coming on uh, here in just a few days. And he was... Uh, in security, I don't mean just a security guard, I mean spying on members of the NSA was his job and tracking what was coming in and out of the NSA and they knew that taps were being put on by outside agencies and contractors even before 9-11 that this was the ultimate national security risk was to actually let the contractors in which you actually saw that happen with Snowden and I'm not saying it's a bad thing what Snowden did but you build this giant surveillance grid and now it's the surveillance grid that's actually burning Hillary and Obama and the Bushes because it's the NSA technology that people are jacking into that is creating the leaks, <laughs> which is what William Benny, who headed the NSA, told them 20 years ago, do not do this. And the guy's got a 200 IQ, like an idiot savant that thinks in three-dimension, four-dimension uh, fractal uh, systems, um, Holograms. I had dinner with him for like two hours. Came to visit us for a few days here in Austin. But, you know, at that dinner, I was sitting there talking to him about all this stuff. And, of course, he wasn't telling me any classified things, but just stuff that I'd seen in quantum mechanics and, and theoretical physics and how even mainline journals had been predicting that the NSA was using uh, holograms. Uh, but uh, I still had people sitting right next to us, leaning over, watching us and listening to us and, you know, following us around. Because they've SWAT teamed that guy, you name it. The point is, is that it's weird to live in the real world. While the general public's watching the NFL, and I'm not knocking any of you do, but come on. And, and while the general public's, you know, watching Dances with the Stars, the real world is going on around you. But I'm going to do a big review this week of Snowden. I have no financial connection to it. Uh, I liked Oliver Stone for JFK and a few of his other films. Uh, his history series was pretty powerful. 
but I got to tell you, I really admire him now because of how accurate this film is. Now, I'm done talking about that film until I put out a produced piece later this week because I want to really... I'm going to go back and watch it again and, and actually write notes because I, I expected to see some whitewash and it did not happen. It was, it was extremely powerful. Um, so I, I'm going to do a big review later this week. But you do need to go see the film. Uh, that said, though, you need to support independent media. And obviously most of you know that. I just want to thank those that have supported us, that have spread the word, that have prayed for us, that have bought our products because we've built InfoWars that reaches over 30 million people a week now. One way or another, it was... 28 million a few months ago, it was 26 million a few months before that, and it was 20 million a year ago a week, and, and you know, it's 30 plus million, and quite frankly, we have NSA technology to know that. That's what Google and Google Analytics and, and, and all the software that the internet is, is NSA. The NSA created the internet, the NSA uh, just lets us have a small part of it to be able to track everything we do, but with the NSA technology, just, just with one Google tool, we know it's 28 million people as of a few months ago, 30 plus as of um, just a few weeks ago. And, and, and that's taking the, the, the 20 million so we know that are just coming to our IP addresses and to our platforms and adding those numbers up. And then adding what we know we have on terrestrial radio, it brings us to over 30 million. Uh, and I'm not saying that to brag, I'm, I'm tying it all together for you that with one one hundredth of the type of knowledge and data the NSA has, I know where our listeners are, what countries, what their IP addresses are, everything. People say, well, you're being a hypocrite. I'm not doing any such thing. I'm telling you. This is how the Internet works. You can't be on the Internet and not do this. And here's what I'm getting at. What have we built? What have we constructed? What has the establishment allowed to be done with the architecture of this to put kill switches in every major chip in the world? And then let the Chinese manufacture about 60% of those chips and the South Koreans and the Japanese and others. And then put those in all our fighter jets, tanks, submarines, ICBMs, cruise missiles, tow missiles, and everything else you can imagine. But let's go further. What has the establishment done where they start a new type of war where the Japanese and the Swiss and, and all of our allies but the British and the Israelis have had infrastructure systems put in to shut off their power plants, their dams, their hospitals, everything, their power grids, in one second. And the movie admits which, what we covered at the time. And then we're going to our reporters on the ground in New York. It admits that five and a half years ago, the U.S. started, and when I say U.S., the global set of hijacked the U.S., the criminals, launched a war on Syria that was becoming our ally, working with us, that let the West get in and get the chips in their grid and to shut their power, their water, and their Internet off for over a month so that the jihad armies out of Saudi Arabia could launch their 200,000-man attack. Our criminal government launched an attack on the biggest Christian nation in the Middle East, 22% Christian at the time, 200-plus thousand Christians dead. And I'm sitting there in the movie knowing every bit of the movie, Every bit of it. And, 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 you know, reading the books about Snowden and having the guest on and having folks on that train Snowden, who they have in the movie, William Benny. And I'm sitting there, and I couldn't believe they went past stuff that wasn't in the books and wasn't in the news that I'd been told by people that are high up. I was just like, I don't know how this came out. I, I'm sorry to keep gushing. It's just that redonkulous. Now, after we talked to Owen Schroyer, who's on the ground in New York, where there was not a bombing, because Hillary and the media said, you do not call the bombing a bombing. She says, you do not call the bombing a bombing. This is not Alice in Wonderland Tea Party. This is not an insane asylum. This is how dumb they think you are. There's no illegal spying either. Remember that. There's no New World Order. There's no TPP. There's no carbon taxes. None of it's true. Just everything we told you is coming true in triplicate. Because I was wild enough to let whistleblowers come on and to get threatened, and to get sued, and to get physically attacked. And they just kind of underestimated me, because I guess I act goofy. They thought, oh, well, that's just Alex Jones. So what if whistleblowers go on him? We'll just discredit him. It doesn't matter if you smash me. You discredit me in my name. The info gets out. It makes it safer for others to talk about it, and then it's a chain reaction. See, I don't think like you. I'm not doing this to be the egomaniac in charge of everything. I'm doing it to stop you. 
So I'm happy up front to be the one that hits the barbed wire. I'm happy to get chewed up by your political machine gun fire because I'm going to draw out your location for everybody coming behind me. I'm a trailblazer. And I'm not a trailblazer because I want to be a trailblazer. I'm a trailblazer because it's got to be done. You people are dangerous. You've got to be dealt with. You've got to have somebody stand up to you and say no. And that's what we've done. And I'm proud of it. And I'm proud of all the other patriots out there that have made this broadcast possible. So there was a bombing in New Jersey yesterday. There was a bombing in New York yesterday. It is terrorism. Islamic State has taken responsibility. And we're going to cover it with our reporters on the ground when we come back. Now, some people say, who I taught them the term false flag. I taught them the term self-inflicted wound. I taught them the term inside job concerning terrorism. And then I see the comments, Alex, it's all a staged deal. None of it's real. Blah, blah, blah. No, no, no. There have been staged events. A lot of it's been declassified. We cover those real events. The media says that I say everything's a false flag. I never did that. But this is a false flag in that the globalists are behind radical Islam and opening the door for it and protecting it and bringing them in. That's a prima facie on its face fact. You cannot debate it. But the difference is the globalists are actually now allied with Islam to take over the West in the next 20 years. And they mean business because they think we're soft and stupid. And they think jihadis are basically culturally mind controlled and they'll do whatever they're told. So that's why I'm opposing it, and I know it's real, because it's the action of the giant jihad army. The globalists have turned loose with Saudi Arabia, known as Al-Qaeda and ISIS. So I'm here saying stop letting them into the country, because they're forming up and getting ready for even bigger attacks that will then be used to bring in a permanent state of emergency. And I told you what happened in Europe. It's now been done. Next, it's coming here. And I'm not going to lose our free society, because our traitor government brought in a bunch of damn jihadis. This is not our government. The story does not add up. We're on a mission to expose the globalists that have hijacked our country. They're working with radical Islam. They're working with the Saudi Arabians, the communist Chinese, and others to overthrow this country. They want to have a terror attack they stage, working with the jihadis. Then have a police state that's set up that we accept that's then really used on us to have the globalists and the central government clamp down on the people. Now, if you've never heard the New World Order described to you, perfectly and succinctly, that's it. They advertise to bring the jihadis into Europe. They tell them there's free women, whiskey and gold. Come on in, baby. They come in, they red carpet them. The UN runs TV ads in Germany saying blonde women wear hijabs. The socialist leaders on national TV uh, in the Bundestag say being German is evil. Breed with the Muslims. I mean, this is treason. We have the articles up on Infowars.com. If you're a new listener, I know that sounds insane. Truth is stranger than fiction. The fact that the NSA dials in and turns on your webcams and watches you for fun and almost every NSA member has been caught in other agencies, you know, tracking their wife or husband. I think I probably would too if I had that technology. The point is, is that you're not supposed to have one group with this and nobody else. This is dangerous. Now, I know I've gone off on a jag about that. For the next few segments, I'm going to cover the attacks in New Jersey and in New York yesterday with pressure cooker bombs. Two bombs went off. Other bombs were found. 29 people were injured, some of them critically. You know, faces blown off, you name it. They bombed a Marine Corps uh, fundraiser, March uh, jog. And it's supposedly, according to Hillary, we're not supposed to say it's a terror attack. This is like living in North Korea if we buy this. Hillary should be instantly discredited. Now, the good news is, coming up later in the next hour... Trump polling surge is turning into a tidal wave. We have the poll numbers across the nation. Black voters are turning from Trump, from Clinton to Trump in new polls. Race titans in projected U.S. electoral college vote, Reuters. CBS says they're in a dead heat in battleground states. Now he's 10 points ahead. Remember when, he, remember when they say he, he's in a dead heat, he's 10 points ahead. Remember I told you a month ago when they said he was losing, that was all a big lie. We have internal polls, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to leave it at that. But Trump was so confident. Trump's got scientific polls nationwide at great expense going on daily. They know the real numbers. Ten points ahead. Folks, he's so far ahead in New York, he may even win it. And I know there's hardly any Republicans even registered there. It's almost a pure Democrat state. But in internal polls, and even in mainline polls, he is ahead. He is only a few points ahead in, all, in a few states, but if you look at places like D.C., Hillary is only a few points ahead. She was 20 points ahead a month ago. And that's Google polls that are being scientifically done of respondents where they know which political party they're in. 
Democrats usually win D.C. by 30 points. Hillary's only a few points. What, four points ahead of Trump? Now, what's that tell you? She is in deep horse manure because she's a total fraud. She said she wasn't sick. We know she's been in the hospital off and on for over a year. We know she's been falling down from the Secret Service. What did I tell you with Biggs four and a half weeks ago on the Sunday show? From our Secret Service sources that we personally met in Cleveland at the RNC and then got us the intel as promised three weeks later. We don't know what's wrong with her. We think it's Parkinson's or a brain tumor. She's falling down. How soon? Every 20, 30 minutes. She's got special stuff to get in the vehicles. Go look at it for yourself. All turned out to be true. Then she fell down in front of everyone, and the news wouldn't even show the video of her falling down. It showed her, like, wobbling and said, oh, she just stumbled and cut the tape. And now that same media thinks you're so dumb, they say there wasn't bombs yesterday in New York and New Jersey. Let's play Hillary last night talking about the bombing on her plane doing a press conference, and then... They start talking about how bad Trump is 40 seconds later because he called it a bombing. I mean, like if I said, if anyone wears a navy blue sports jacket, they are the filth of the earth and should be arrested. Anyone wearing that should be discredited. I'm wearing a navy blue jacket. That's what she did. She, she's like, she, she's saying, there's a bombing and he's horrible. He said it's a bombing. This is upside down Looneyville, folks. Let's go to the clip. I've been briefed uh, about the bombings in New York and New Jersey and the attack in Minnesota. Uh, obviously, we need to do everything we can to support our first responders, uh, also to uh, pray for the victims. Uh, we have to let this investigation unfold. We've been in touch with uh, various officials, including the mayor's office in New York. Uh, to learn what uh, they are discovering as they conduct this investigation. And I'll have more to say about it when we actually know some facts. Secretary, do you have any reaction to the fact that Donald Trump immediately upon taking the stage tonight called the explosion in New York a bomb and what that's the term? Well, I think it's important to know the facts about uh, any incident like this. Uh, that's why it's uh, critical to support the first responders, the investigators, uh, who are looking into it, trying to determine what did happen. Uh, I think it's uh, always uh, wiser to wait until you have uh, information before uh, making conclusions, uh, because we are just in the beginning uh, stages of trying to determine what now, Owen Schroyer and our crew are in New York City, site of the bombing last night. The bombing that injured 29, a pressure cooker. Another one went off in New Jersey the same day, and other bombs were found and deactivated by the police. So there were bombs. The police say they were bombs. It's terrorism. But Hillary, Owen, says that there was a bombing, and and, and Trump shouldn't call it a bombing. I mean, we've reached a new level here. Uh, what's your latest info, my friend? Well, Alex, we're out here on the scene, and there is a bomb squad here. There is counterterrorism uh, also present here. So it's amazing how they'll say it's not a bombing or it's not terror, but then the government sends out bomb squads and counterterrorism squads. So they're kind of – it's a bit of a double think there. But we know what the media is trying to do. They want to massage this for Hillary. And, you know, you were just talking about the polls, not to get off track here, but – Hillary wouldn't even be polling. Hillary wouldn't even be on the stage if she didn't have the media in her back pocket. But as you were saying earlier, it is scary that we can have a bombing happen and then have the media and our own government officials here in New York pretend like it's no big deal, pretend like it wasn't a bombing, and just try to shuffle it under the rug. Oh, and it's so crazy, it makes my head spin. I mean, it's the next level of brainwashing. And, and absolutely, I mean, Hillary knows they flooded the country with jihadis. Same thing in Europe. It's the same policy. They will not call... 90-plus people dead in Nice, a terror attack. They say it's a truck attack. Well, and think about this, Alex. You know, we still have questions from past bombings that weren't so long ago. The Boston Marathon bombing, what did they use for that? A pressure cooker bomb. But they say there's no relation between the two events. We had an explosion in Central Park. I believe it was July 2nd or somewhere around then. Yes. Blew, blew a kid's leg off. Nothing. No answers on that. Could this be the same person? We don't know. That's right, a landmine. It was a landmine. Well, and then Cuomo comes out, and, and what does he say? He says, nobody's claimed responsibility. That's an outright lie. And then he says that he, he knows that this was not an international act of terror. 
So they're sitting here, they're saying, well, we don't know. We still need more intel, but we know for sure it's not ISIS related. We know for sure it's ISIS not ISIS. ISIS is taking responsibility for this and the nine people stabbed, three critically, in Minnesota with a guy screaming Allah Akbar and asking, are you Muslim? And they say no. And they go, ah, jihad. I mean, oh, but it's not the Muslims. Well, and we can sit here and maybe we'll figure out what happened with this bombing. Maybe we won't. But we know what the real story here is. They want to bring in the Islamic people from the Middle East. They tear the parts of they tear those countries apart with war. They bring in the refugees. That's all a destabilization attempt in America, just like what happened in Europe. They want to do that same thing here. So of course the media wants to separate any relation to ISIS. Of course the media wants to say that, uh, or Hillary wants to say that Islam is the religion of peace, because they have to have the American public buying that, so that when they bring a million refugees here from those war-torn countries. People won't be scared that there's going to be bombs planted all over their cities. But then when the bombs go off, we all have to lose our rights to keep us safe from the events that are, quote, intentional events, but not terrorism and certainly not Islamic. Yeah, you know, and again, it's like, how can they sit here and say that, well, we're still doing our investigation. We don't really have any answers, but we know it's not ISIS. We know it's not an international act of terror. How do you know that? You are the one saying you don't know, well, but I mean, that you know that. Put Infowars.com up, put Drudge up. We have ISIS officially claiming responsibility for this and saying that the Minnesota stabbing, just like the ones in London and everywhere else, and the cops getting shot and everything when they scream Allah Akbar, ISIS. ISIS celebrates NYC dumpster bombing, a la mall stabbings in Minnesota. There will be more. That's their words, but it's okay because there will be more people in our media that tell us pure lies. The NSA isn't listening to you. There's no police state. Yeah, there is. And the police state's there to keep the jihadi safe and to make sure they can get in and attack us and to spy on the American people and to have George Soros running around trying to fund Black Lives Matter to start a civil war. Ladies and gentlemen, it's actually good news that the globalists are so arrogant that they would try to run a corpse like Hillary, have her with epilepsy, brain tumors, lung cancer, reportedly, from our sources, falling down, has no idea what planet she's on, looks totally ill, uh, always doing, you know, one-person interviews on her airplane for five minutes. Uh, she can't even give a 10-minute speech without coughing, and she's up there just trying to sell us all these lies. It's emblematic, as, as I've said many times, that they're delusional. And I told you. Trump was 15, 10 to 15 points, depending on the poll, in scientific polls, and even in mainstream polls, uh, after the RNC. So they got freaked out, changed the methodology, and put him 10 points behind. But now he surged so much in some internal polls nationally, 15, 20 points ahead, that even with 15 points added, he's, he's ahead by five points. This is a tsunami. This is a tidal wave. And even mainstream analysts, I'm going to cover it later, are now admitting it. So we told you, folks, and we told you there's election fraud, and they were going to federalize the election. And a month later, they announced they're doing it. We know what we're talking about. We know the enemy. We know that when two bombs go off and ISIS claims responsibility, it's terrorism. You're like, yeah, that's not very smart to know. I know. I know. When the sun comes up, I can say, I get it. That's what I mean. This is not hard. Explosive language. Call the New York... Bombing terrorism already. That's what the observer's saying. Absolutely right. But that's Donald Trump's son-in-law that owns that, so you're going to get some reality. Oh, no, Trump is, 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 what was the word they were using? Uh, Trump, Trump is impulsive. No, he's decisive. Mr. Schroyer, what do you say, reporting from Fullwars.com on the ground uh, there in New York, what do you say about them claiming that, that he's compulsive when they announce bombs have gone off to say bombs have gone off? I mean, are they trying to train us just that they're God and that words themselves are evil? Well, and think about this. That's exactly what an ISIS terror-related group would want. They would want to attack and bomb and do all this stuff and then have the American people or whoever it is they're attacking just sitting on their heels and waiting and thinking, oh, well, we don't know, you know. No, you, you, you have to have some level of impulse. You have to have some level of compulse here. Otherwise, you're going to get stepped all over. If you wait you got to be long, decisive. It's like if a wildfire yeah. is coming. We had wildfires all over Austin six years ago that burned down tens of thousands of acres. Imagine if there's a wildfire coming a mile from your house and you wait for the government to tell you to evacuate. Or you, I mean, it's crazy. It's like it's a damn wildfire. It's a bombing. It's an attack. Well, and think about this, Alex. We're in New York City. Fifteen years ago, the Twin Towers and Building 7 
were brought down by what we were told are radical Islamic terrorists. Now, here we are 15 years later. That was not terrorism. Later. Hillary says we're not allowed to say so. Sorry. Exactly. 15 years later, just saying radical Islamic terror is a crime. So how, I mean, how do the American people not see right through this? How can you go in 15 years from radical Islamic terror bringing down three buildings in this city to now saying you can't say radical Islamic terror, that's the religion of peace? That's all happened in just this city alone, regardless of all the other attacks we've seen, people chanting Allah Akbar and then going around stabbing people. And, you know, they, they like Hillary says, Islam is a religion of peace. Okay, let's say there's one million Muslims on the planet, and let's say five percent of them are radical okay well, well guess what nobody yells praise jesus christ goes into a mall and stabs 20 people nobody yells pray jesus christ or or praise buddha and then blows themselves up in an act of terror okay so there is no, no it, is, it, it is an it. islamic trait to kill each other and to run around murdering for the religion it's, it's like we go have communion well under islam you go blow people up well, and what are what like what are you going to do if this continues? Are, are they going to continue to try to brush it under the rug? Are they going to continue to say it's not radical Islamic terror? Are they going to just make it passe? Are we just going to have to accept it? Mr. What is Troyer, the stay what right is there. We're going to come right back and talk more about what you expect to happen. If Hillary's way behind now in polls. What's she going to pull? Owen Troyer, one of our new great reporters at InfoWars, been a citizen reporter and activist for years out there, has been here a few months doing a great job, he and the team are up in New York City, site of the terrorist bombing that ISIS has taken responsibility for. Another bomb went off in New Jersey. Other bombs were found. The communist mayor will not call it terrorism. The police have been ordered to say it isn't terrorism, uh, despite the fact it is. But it's like if the moon rises at night and the media says, you're not allowed to call that the moon, I'm still going to call it the moon. This is a real exercise in mass mind control. Now, I want to be clear. Our own Pentagon has got a lot of patriots in it who five years ago refused to back Hillary and Obama in the overthrow of Syria. And they've since gone public. General uh, Flynn, who advises Trump, has exposed the fact that uh, Obama and Hillary are basically funding and, and, and arming al-Qaeda. Its new name is ISIS. Its, it, its new country is called Islamic State. But that's an al-Qaeda, Wahhabi, a Saudi Arabian state, part of Iraq, part of Syria. And thanks to... Uh, the military exposing it, and Infowars, and our listeners exposing it, and Rand Paul and, and others coming out exposing it in Congress, we know about it. It was about to be a big ceasefire that the Russians had brokered by all sides that was going to start at midnight last night, but magically, 60-plus uh, Syrian regular army trips and their tanks got blown up and killed in a key battle where al-Qaeda slash ISIS was being defeated. Uh, and so now uh, al-Qaeda is back on the offensive known as ISIS, uh, and Russia is saying it was staged by the U.S. Uh, to kill the ceasefire. Now, Russia is very clear. They said the criminal elements of our government backing radical Islam. And that is exactly what is going on there. So we'll talk more about that coming up. But everywhere you turn, Obama has been aiding ISIS and al-Qaeda. That's why Trump properly said Hillary and Obama are the founders of ISIS. She ran Libya. She ran it all. We've got a big story tomorrow on Libya, breaking at Infowars.com. And this deals with leaks. This is a big story. I'm just going to leave it there. My phones are so tapped. And everything we do is so tapped, it's already known. But this is coming out tomorrow, and it deals with Hillary. And the fact that Hillary, this even came out at the time, but now we have the proof, total proof. Hillary had Gaddafi trying to give up completely, follow every Western demand, turn the country over, but they wanted to wreck it and turn Islamic State loose to kill everybody and wreck the country and create a failed state. So the negotiator with Hillary that was on the phone with Gaddafi is coming on the show this week. And we have all the documents. It's going to be a big deal. Just like we told you a month ago, Hillary's falling down all the time and having epileptic seizures, the Secret Service told us. They got special wheelchair access to her vehicles. We have all the video now. It's all been admitted. We don't make this up. We're the people that will have the whistleblowers on. And the establishment hasn't gotten up to the point yet of being willing to kill me or set me up or arrest me for whistleblowing because I've got so many good people in the government to back us and so many citizens to back us. I'm a radio host. I'm not like Snowden running off you know, in the middle of the night to Hong Kong. And I don't blame him, but you know, where could he go? He had to go to the media. 
We're here. We're exposing the globalists. We're defending this republic from enemies foreign and domestic. All right, going back to our reporter on the street in New York, uh, where do you think all of this is going? What do you think Hillary's going to do when she's way behind in the polls, even the Cook poll she's behind? What is she going to pull? My big concern is they can't cover up all their jihad attacks. They can't cover up the imploding economy, the open borders. They can't cover up what's happening with the uh, dollar. What is Hillary going to do? What is the establishment going to do? Because we got the new Colin Powell emails from Bohemian Grove with the Republican establishment hating Trump, just proving how real he is. Well, you know, they can manipulate big events like 9-11 or, you know, ending the ceasefire in Syria. They have the power to do that kind of stuff. But, you know, if they bring in these radical Islamic terrorists, then they're kind of, you know, people call them lone wolves or whatever you want to call them. But then they don't have control over them. Then they're doing stuff and we can actually get to the bottom of it and we can show what they're doing. So we've seen their response. Deny, deny, deny. And then bring in more of them, bring in more of them, bring in more of them, telling us that they're religion of peace. But as far as what... Hillary's going to do moving forward. We've already, we, I mean, look, we knew that she was getting crushed in the polls. What, where else do you need proof? Okay. She gets nobody at her rally. She gets nobody at her press conferences. You can't find her supporters on the street. Trump gets tens of thousands of people anytime he goes. Even Bernie Sanders, Alex, sp spoke yesterday for Hillary Clinton and had 150 people there. Bernie Sanders went from filling arenas. Now he's only got 150 people because he's supporting Hillary Clinton. So she is absolutely just falling apart at the seams. I don't know what she can do. It's like it gets crazier every day. A bombing happens. She denies it's a bombing. <laughs> I mean, who could predict that? Who could predict such an outrageous thing to come out of a presidential candidate's mouth? Who could say Islam is a religion of peace when it's almost a monthly event now, someone yells Allah Akbar and stabs somebody to death. Oh, and Troyer, does this show that the establishment's mentally ill and thinks they're magic and control reality? Because all they're doing is discrediting themselves, A, and then B, what happens if Hillary actually steals the election and gets in and then ends up being an invalid uh, and, you know, not coming out but every six months or something? You know, I, I'm not really sure what happens if Hillary wins, because I don't think the American public is going to buy that. I, I really don't see how the American public can buy that. And I don't see how she can even serve. She's clearly not fit to serve. So maybe they just, you know, you know, who knows, maybe she dies off or something and Tim Kaine comes in and takes over. But like I said, first of all, they're going to have to pull the mask over everyone in America and say Hillary, Hillary won this because nobody is buying that whatsoever and i would have to say absolutely these people are mentally deranged if you think that you're going to come in and try to take down america and not get backlash from the american citizens you have to be mentally deranged absolutely these people have psychotic psychotic ambitions of world power when you say corrupt elements of the united states government are are the ones destabilizing the world they're working with the same corrupt elements in europe okay in china they're all working together to destabilize. We it's know it's a criminal a element that is using order. this to suppress the domestic populations. Absolutely. And, and, we, and we even have declassified documents. We have the emails now, which shows good people inside our own government are actually leaking info. And I love seeing the whole surveillance grid being used against the establishment. That's got to be really freaking them out. Well, and, and it's like they have to know this now. Maybe, maybe they thought that they had the hearts and the minds of America already won over. Maybe they thought that they already had us as brainwashed as they needed all of us to be, and they got so brazen and so open, and with the media and with pol politicians speaking, it's you know starting to turn on them. People are starting to wake up. But again, the question for me is, who, who do you think they will blame first for what happened in New York? Do you think that they will blame Islamic terror, or do you think they'll blame a pressure cooker? Well, it actually said it's a pressure cooker explosion, not a bomb. Pressure and, cooker's fault, yeah. And the Fraternal Order of Police, the biggest police organization in the country, has come out and endorsed Trump. Hillary didn't even seek their endorsement to show how joker-like she is. I mean, what does that tell you, Owen? Well, and it's like what Dinesh D'Souza said today. You know, the Democrats are looking here and they're saying that Trump is the problem. Trump is the problem, but Trump is actually pointing to the real issues in the country. They can attack Trump all day. Trump is not the one. By the way, I know, I know we've hammered this, but let's all just sit back calmly. In fact, we have that queued up with Hillary saying the bombing, and then the media criticizes that they said the bombing because uh, we played it earlier.
think about this. She comes out in a press conference and says, we had a bombing, and Trump is wrong to call it a bombing. We actually have her last night talking to a reporter saying this, and you're like, this is so crazy that Trump is now to blame for the bombing, for calling it a bombing, when it's a bombing. It's next-level insanity. Well, they've been trying to tell us that the sky is green and grass is blue for a long time. But, you know, if you even look at Hillary when she makes these statements, I mean, she looks either like an inch away from death or drugged out of her mind. It's one of those two. Well, things. that's the headline. Yeah, a frail looking Hillary hits Trump for calling NYC attack bombings after doing the same. And, and that's mainstream news saying that. I mean, this is reaching cocoa for cuckoo puffs level where I don't even... Is this even real? I mean, am I in a dream? Is this the Matrix? I mean, uh, thank you, Owen. We'll be back. Stay with us. You heard Obama. Raising the debt does not raise the debt. Two plus two does not equal four. You did not build your business. You can keep your doctor. Obamacare is free. Then Obamacare was the cost of a cable bill. The IRS was not there and would not take penalties of up to $5,000 a year out of your bank account. It's happening all over the country now. You know you were lied to. And now, Hillary says the bombing today in New York was not a bombing. And Trump was wrong to call it a bombing. The bombing was not a bombing. The bombing was not a bombing. This is who you're trying to elect. I mean, Hillary is an international war criminal involved in so many crimes my head spins. It isn't about Hillary or Trump or, 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 or these personalities. Hillary is the establishment. Hillary is so evil. What is wrong with supposed Democrats that would support this woman? And then all the weird gay rallies around the country that I see on the news saying Trump's a homophobe. When Trump was doing interviews with The Advocate, the biggest game newspaper in the country, and calling for equal rights 30 years ago when no one else was. I mean, he's known for being, I mean, conservatives should have a problem with him for being too liberal. My point is, is it isn't reality. Bombings are bombings, ladies and gentlemen. To Hillary Clinton called the incident a bombing, the Clinton mouthpiece media then slammed Donald Trump for calling the incident a bombing. I've been briefed uh, about the uh, bombings in New York and New Jersey. Secretary, do you have any reaction to the fact that Donald Trump immediately upon taking the stage tonight called the explosion in New York a bomb? Bombings in New York. Bombings, bombings, bombings. We played the full two-minute clip earlier. She goes on to say, yeah, he's... You know, he's, where's the quote? I actually wrote it down. Here it is. Um, she said that, uh, we had to play the full clip, it's up on Infowars.com, that he was, uh, you know, basically somebody that just jumped in, made stuff up. No, it's a bombing. I mean, I mean, that's what happened. And then you admit it's a bombing, but then they say it's wrong that Donald Trump's calling it a bombing right after you call it a bombing. I mean, this is so simple, so ridiculous. It actually makes my head hurt that we've gotten to this point. Now, I want to go to some other video clips here, because there's a bunch of them. We have Meet the Press cuts to commercial, and we've checked their clock. We've checked uh, when they were supposed to go to commercial. They weren't supposed to. As Trump's spokeswoman attacks Clinton. And in the Meet the Press interview featuring Donald Trump's campaign manager, Kathleen Conway, Sunday, in which she tore apart Clinton campaign, a moment before her feed was cut off. It's like when Trump got up and said Hillary's the founder of ISIS, they cut his feed. Then it happened two or three other times. This is the level of censorship, and the show is run by former top Democrat White House operatives. So this is how stupid they think we are. Let's go ahead and play that clip. The full video is on InfoWars.com. And Hillary Clinton has changed her mind. You just told her running mate, this woman, you, you're very legitimately said to Tim Hing. Hillary Clinton has these pillar, twin pillar problems of transparency and trustworthiness. And she's done nothing to put to rest either one 
with all these days to go. I would argue that somebody who's not particularly liked and not particularly trusted by the public, as Hillary Clinton is not, really has nowhere to go. I mean, don't they feel trapped that the polls are tightening now, that we're out there giving our message directly to the voters, and they're running 22... Driscoll Health Plan introduces Star Kids, the plan for children with special needs. Our service coordinators will offer you one-on-one -on -one help to develop a care plan as unique as your child. The right doctors, the right... These coalitions. Well, all right, let's hit pause. Let's back up a minute. So we cut it a little bit short because they actually got us several minutes of ads. But right during the middle of it, they put some medical ad up about doctors. And then they come back to her after they've basically shut her down. Now, the next clip I want to get to is up on Infowars.com. We posted this Friday. A five-year-old could tell this was satire. It was Joe Biggs' idea. Maybe 5% of what we do is satire. And it's the voice in Hillary's earpiece reveal. InfoWars uncovers the man behind Hillary Clinton's earpiece. And it's Joe Biggs and it's Mr. Schroyer, the reporter we're just talking to, make a joke about all the crazy stuff she's done, barking like a dog and doing other weird stuff during speeches she's given. So we get a comedy piece. Facebook suspended Joe Biggs' account suspended other accounts that ran it, and sent us messages saying, you're putting out misleading news. Then we had commenters on InfoWars saying, this is satire, don't deceive us. Listen, if you're so stupid that you think a drone actually landed to get Hillary's earpiece, and you think Joe Biggs is telling her to bark like a dog, I'm sorry, tune out of the show. Okay? Now, I know that's trolls doing it. I know most of the audience got it. 90% of people loved it. But... This is satire about her having her staff in the WikiLeaks and in the FBI files and in the FBI interviews admit they have hammers by their sides to destroy their cell phones and computers if they get raided. That's the whole point of the piece. Here it is. All right, Madam Secretary, can you hear me? Just nod if you can hear me. Okay, good. All right, Secretary Clinton, you are in Selma, Alabama. These people are not going to react to your New York accent. I need you to tone it down and use that really thick Southern accent you've learned from living in Arkansas. All right, come on. I don't feel Go no ways tired. I come too far from where I started from. All right, Secretary Clinton, you and I both know that those lives of the people that died in Benghazi don't even matter. They're hammering you right now. Just say, what difference does it make? At this point, what difference does it make? What difference at this point does it make? It is our job to figure out what happened and do everything we can to prevent it from ever happening again. All right, you're kind of drawing this whole thing out a little too far. Let's go on ahead and change it up. Bark like a dog. Not like a ferocious dog, but like a chihuahua. Give me a arr, 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 arr. Yeah, I, we, I think we should just raise taxes on the middle class, but, you know, I'm not the one running for... We are going to raise wait, 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 no, 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 Secretary Clinton, no, 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 no! Make what we've got work right, really right on, well right. and improve it and get the costs out of... Oh, I'm sorry. Upward spiral, upward spiral. Uh, upward spiral. Now, I want to mention two other things. Secretary Clinton, yes. last, last week it was reported on Infowars.com that your email server was hacked and you knowingly continued to use your email server. Can you comment on that? That was a damn Infowars reporter. They're asking about your emails. Deny, 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 deny! Yeah, it's totally untrue. Okay, totally good job. Good job. Thank you. That was close. All right, you and I both know this is an extremely boring press conference. Uh... Let's just act like we're super into it. Whoa, tone it down, tone it down. That's way too much. You just have a seizure? <laughs> Everyone's going to be thinking that you had a seizure. Uh, that's enough. See the second half, satire, which means it's a joke. But it's hilarious. Great job, Joe Biggs and the rest of the crew with that one. The exciting conclusion of it's up on InfoWars.com. But I'm going to come back into the amazing poll numbers where Trump is not a wave, not a surge, but a tsunami of victory. All right, let's get serious here and cover some of the really good, positive news that's going on. Uh, first off, we have developed more than 25 in the last four years super high-powered supplements, nutraceuticals that are game changers. Survival Shield X2, nascent iodine, uh, lung cleanse. Uh, we've got BioTrue, selenium. Nobody else has got uh, selenium at this quality, this level from the mustard seed uh, at this dose. And it should be 50 bucks. It's 1995. 
We've got so many great deals at InfoWarsLife.com or InfoWarsStore.com is the umbrella site. We're running a special until Wednesday, and it's over. 20% off our flagship product, Super Male and Super Female Vitality. It's classic known herbs for thousands of years, concentrated, cold-pressed, so they don't lose their bioavailability. And all I know is it works incredibly well. Third-party supplement sites that review stuff absolutely love it. Uh, it's got 4.5 stars out of 1,400-plus reviews at Power Reviews. Nobody has got a male enhancement like this. Libido, stamina, energy, 1,471 reviews. Go to the sites. Look it up yourself. Infowarslife.com. Infowarslife.com. Or call toll-free seven days a week, 24 hours a day, 888-253-3139. 888-253-3139. We have one other special that's going to end in the next few days. That's because it's going to sell out. We have red camouflage in blue, made in America, limited edition, knockoffs. And I say knockoffs, and they're not copies. So we can legally do it. Trump's fine with it. Make America free again hats. And this, I told you it was a limited edition. We're almost out of them. So I'm doing a sale made in America. Ladies and gentlemen, the hats cost us $9 a piece. They're $14.98. Infowarsstore.com is the umbrella site. And that's where you find the water filtration, the air filtration, the books, the films, the videos, thousands of great items, shortwave radios, amazing solar panel systems and control units, the, the most cutting edge, lowest price we can find. Whatever our team does research on and I use and I think is the best, we're constantly updating, is sold at Infowarsstore.com. Or simply call toll-free, 888 Two five three three one three nine. But try Super Male Vitality or Female Vitality for yourself today and find out why it's such an amazing uh, product and why it's so popular. But regardless, you're supporting the transmission, and we need your support more than ever uh, because of the fact we're trying to expand. We've got reporters traveling the country and the world. It's really expensive. Everything we're doing is having a huge effect. It is a win-win. So I want to thank all of our supporters. Whether you link to our stories or whether you buy the products or whether you pray for us or whether you spread the word about the podcast or tell people about local AM and FM affiliates or become local sponsors there, all of it is moving the world. You can see that InfoWars is having a bigger and bigger effect every day, and it's because of you and our great team. So I want to thank you all. Now, I mentioned these polls, but let's get into some of these numbers. And... I want to explain something. When I read these stories, I call politicos, libertarians, Democrats, Republicans I know. I talk to people that are the national pollsters, and I tell them, off record, tell me the truth. And I get a very clear picture across the board of what's really happening. Not the big polls they push that you see on the news every night, but what the corporations, the banks, the political parties are actually paying to have real polls. There's fake polls they're paying for as well to create perception. Oh, look, Hillary's 30 points ahead. Hillary's 50 points ahead. I made the joke of why not saying she's 5,000 points ahead. I mean, you can only say she's 100% ahead if she got every voter in America. 335 million Americans, you'd say Hillary got 100%. That's impossible. 100% don't vote. You get 60% turnouts in national elections. 40-something percent turnouts in off years. So every two years... You get 40-something percent, then every four, uh, when it's a national election, you get 60, 61, 62, 65 is about as high as it's ever gotten. So it's impossible to say she could get 100%, but see, the New York Times just a month ago was saying Hillary had a 95% chance of winning. Then it dropped down to 90. I, I checked the New York Times. And it said 87% chance last week. In fact, let's go to the New York Times right now for TV viewers. A lot of folks are watching us at Infowars.com forward slash show. You can go there and, and let's see if it's dropping more. It creates a perception. And that way they can say, oh, 95%, oh, 87%, oh, 85%. Hoping you believe it's a foregone conclusion. Hoping you buy the propaganda. Hoping you go to sleep. Hoping you shut up. But see, as he surges way ahead, they've got to start hedging their bet. Okay, uh, 85, uh, 70, uh, 55, oh, he's going to win. How much do you want to bet that on the day Hillary loses, November 8th, they've got Trump winning? 
Latest election poll, they've got Donald J. Trump at 42, Hillary at 44. Well, that's another poll. They've got one on their front page every day on their news feed they sent out because I subscribe to it that, 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 that shows on their front page 80-something percent chance Trump's going to lose. Everybody's seen it. And sure, the real polls they've got that are still spins have him losing. Do a control F Trump. And then search, search, search. You'll, you'll find it. Uh, you know, have him only losing by two points. But all the other polls show him nationally. CNN polls, LA Times polls, uh, Rasmussen polls, Bloomberg polls, six to seven to eight points ahead with a margin of error of three points. Donald Trump is ahead with a margin of error by three points at least, even in these Cook polls, with Reuters and others adding 10 to 15 percent more Democrats in the demographic they poll. So with that said, if we have a former member of the KGB. I have a clip of this coming out uh, and saying, don't buy the propaganda. Don't buy the lies. And John Bowen actually breaks this down in a very powerful report. Hillary Clinton has a campaign of globalist demoralization. Don't believe it. And I really want to air this report, but I've got another report that's even more important. I want to air after the break. We'll see how much time we have. But, but let's go ahead and go through these polls. This is the Daily Caller. Two weeks ago, some pundits began talking about Trump's surge. Suddenly, the surge is looking like a full-fledged wave. Trump's polling surge is now a wave. I call it a tsunami. In one battleground after another, the billionaire real estate mogul is opening up a lead over Hillary Clinton or making that state's race competitive again. Here's how beating Clinton in several of the latest polls, and then they go over in Ohio, in Florida, in Iowa, and let's talk about those actual poll numbers. Black voters are turning from Clinton to Trump in new poll. That's the New York Post. Same thing. Hillary had a 20-plus percent lead in D.C. It's now a 5 percent lead. I mean, in places that are Democrat-owned, she's only got five-point leads when they were 20-plus point leads just a month ago. Trump saw a 16.5% point increase in backing from African-American votes in Los Angeles Times, University of Southern California tracking poll, up from 3.1% in September to 19.6% Friday. That's only because the L.A. Times and others were discrediting themselves, putting out fake polls where they were only sampling Democrats that came out. So now they know his landslide is so huge that claiming he's losing isn't going to work. So now they're just putting out real polls. There hasn't been a Republican since Ronald Reagan got more than 15%. In the most liberal area of the country, he's getting 19+. plus. See? This is only them now saving face because they know it's a landslide for Trump. They know she's collapsing they, physically and figuratively. Let's continue. Race Titans. In U.S. Electoral College vote, Reuters basically admits what, what Roger Stone told us four days ago. He's a top analyst. He's winning the Electoral College now. That's Reuters. But CBS tries to spin it. They just say they're tied in battleground states. Tied in battleground states. No, he's 6 to 10, 15 points ahead. You name it in battleground states. All right, I'll be back tomorrow, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Central. Again, Lord willing, nobody knows he'll be here tomorrow. Or this planet may not be here tomorrow. Who knows? All the crazy stuff going on. But I'll be here, hopefully, tomorrow, 11 a.m. Central. Hope you're going to be here with us. Had a lot of big guests this week. A lot of uh, special reports coming out. Want to take your phone calls as well. A lot of other news I didn't get to. Obama enlists Republican Kasich to push TPP trade deal, which, again, is a transfer of our power to multinationals outside of Congress, outside of the power of the people. Uh, that's out of the Hill, and Reuters is also reporting that. Uh, Black Lives Matter leader uh, calls for greater uh, police presence after being robbed. This is a guy that bitches about the police all day and wants them out of his neighborhood at the University of Houston. But since he got robbed, he wants the police there. Uh, there's just no end to it. Speaking of Black Lives Matter, black police officers, senior police officers suing Black Lives Matter and Soros for inciting race war, which Soros' own emails show they are doing. Uh, so that is all happening. People think America is in a trance. They think we're, we're done. And they want to play us all off against each other. The truth is, no matter what color you are or where you're from, if you care about free market, you care about leading your own life and, and, and having low taxes and 
promoting American values, you should become an American. But the globalists want to bring people here and turn them against the country and create a divide and conquer and have the nation implode. And that's why we have to expose globalism, because it's about foreign multinationals conquering this country and turning it into a greater engine of tyranny. And to a great extent, we've been conquered. And I'm here trying to kick the globalist occupiers out. That's the group I'm anti. I'm not anti-government. I'm not anti-anybody. But I'm anti Social engineers coming in here and playing games because the country is so obsessed with entertainment, we're in a trance. So that's part of the news I wanted to cover today. I got to most of it. I want to air this special report because Hillary talked about, look at how somebody actually behaves. Look at their fruits. Look at what they've said in the past. And so I wanted to look back on just some of the crimes of Hillary Clinton. The full video is on Infowars.com. Well, the crime boss, Hillary Rodham Clinton, came out today and said that we should judge basically everybody not just Donald Trump, off of what they originally actually said and basically did. That, that we should go off somebody's original record. Here's the clip. In recent weeks, he's tried to restrain himself and clean up his image. But as Maya Angelou once said, when someone shows you who they are, believe them the first time. So she's demonizing Donald Trump because he questioned Barack Obama's birth certificate and the fact that Barack Obama, when he was the editor of the Harvard Law Review, said in his bio that he was born in Kenya. But Trump said, okay, hey, you were born in America, let's just move on. But since Hillary brought up the past, let's look at the past. Let's look at what she originally said, what she originally did. In her college thesis, she was a pen pal with Saul Alinsky, who wrote Rules for Radicals, who was an admitted communist and basically uh, one of the ideological leaders of the Weathermen, who, of course, were also um, advisors to Obama. And he pledged his book to Lucifer. And he talked about deceiving the public, overthrowing America, going after Christians, creating basically a hell on earth. And there was sweet little Hillary being groomed all along and pen pals with him and writing her thesis on how wonderful Saul Alinsky was. After college, Hillary went on to represent child molesters in court and, you know, made jokes about how she couldn't believe guilty people could pass lie detector tests. He was one of the ruthless folks who wasn't going to make a living on the land and he was kind of around. He ended up spreading that one of the Of course, he claimed that he did then she got thrown off of the Watergate investigative committee because she was caught fabricating evidence against Richard Nixon. I mean, this girl was involved in the dirtiest of the dirt from the moment she got out of the gate. Then she hitched her wagon to William Jefferson Clinton, and her star began to rise. Oh, there were cattle future scams and swindling old folks uh, out of their property in Arkansas with whitewater deals. There were CIA airfields at Mena and cocaine admittedly being flown in and the Clintons overseeing the whole operation. There were over 100 murders, now known as Arkansas, where enemies of the Clintons were killed. But don't worry, the Arkansas medical examiner, Fami Malik, said it's totally normal to chop your arms, your legs, and your head off in a suicide. But once Hillary Clinton became co-president in 1993, the horror only intensified. She launched wars against the Serbs to bring in jihad armies out of Albania. She bombed TV stations with depleted uranium and bragged that she's the one that got Clinton to go ahead and pull the trigger. She supported the most incredible sanctions basically doubling what George Herbert Walker Bush had done, even stopping shipments of food into Iraq. And over a half million children died. But her own Secretary of State, Madeleine Albright, her confidant, her mentor, told 60 Minutes that it was a good price to pay a half million dead kids. We have heard that a half a million children have died. I mean, that's more children than died when, when in, in Hiroshima. and and. You know, is the price worth it? I think this is a very hard choice, but the price, we think the price is worth it. Now, if I try to chronicle all the crimes committed by the Clintons when they were in the White House for eight years, we'll be here for 10 hours. So let me just skip past 
all the stuff that happened and Monica Lewinsky and the Chinese generals in the White House and our missile secrets being transferred to the communist Chinese and uh, national sovereignty being sold out and our jobs being sold out with NAFTA and GATT and how the Clintons engineered getting rid of the Glass-Steagall Act to allow big mega banks to create all this counterfeit money and derivatives. Let's just forget about all that. Let's fast forward to what they've been doing in the last decade. Launching their big giant foundation, and we have the emails, where she sold access to the Chinese president, where she sold access through the State Department uh, to change U.S. policy if donors would give her money. Phone calls to Huma Abedin and to other people in the State Department from donors to the Clinton Foundation asking for meetings, asking for access. True or false? Uh, first of all, uh, there's no question there were phone calls uh, made to get appointments for people, but Mohammed Yunus, a Nobel laureate, um, uh, Melinda Gates, I mean, these are people that any Secretary of State would have uh, uh, would have seen, courtesy appointments and others. Business people. There were also business people. There's no the question about that. But and then we learn, thanks to all the different hacked emails, which she admits are real, that she sent people dressed as Bernie Sanders supporters to attack Trump rallies so she could blame both Trump and Sanders. Then she stole the nomination. And even CNN and the Associated Press admitted that it was the super PACs. It was the big donors. It was the super delegates who actually decided who would be the nominee. And now that she's stolen, the nomination, she's eyeing stealing the general election because she's way behind even in these polls. Even in places like D.C. where she was 20-something points ahead of Trump, she's only a few points ahead of him now. She's in free fall. So the big question is, this woman that tells us, look at what somebody said first, look at what they did first, look at their record. But as Maya Angelou once said, when someone shows you who they are, believe them the first time. Before we start celebrating the fact that Hillary Clinton is in free fall and that the mainstream media has been totally discredited trying to cover up her collapse in New York on 9-11, before we celebrate that, you have to understand, the crime syndicate behind Hillary isn't going to give up power easily. They know nationalism is rising in Russia and with the uh, Brexit and with what's happening now here in the United States with Donald Trump. So they're throwing everything they can against Trump and the nationalist movement. False flags, race riots, you name it. George Soros is turning up the heat. The Ford Foundation just gave $100 million to Black Lives Matter. This is the time for vigilance. This is the time to be focused. This is the time to be praying that this republic be restored. But with Hillary, we see this sickening bloodlust, this bloodthirst where she brags about creating a failed state in Libya and coming and seeing and Gaddafi dying and then organizing Al Qaeda to then become ISIS and invade Syria and target Christians and then not let them get out of the country, but bring the actual Sunni invaders into the United States. The truth is Hillary Clinton wants to mount America's head on the wall. Hillary Clinton wants to dominate this republic. Hillary Clinton is an enemy, a domestic enemy, and an agent of globalism. And if this republic is to survive, Hillary Clinton must fall. The good news is Providence has always shown that when the people take action, do the right thing, and take those first steps, God will carry us historically the rest of the way. And the hand of doom, as we see her deteriorate on a daily basis, has already reached Hillary Rodham Clinton. This is the heart of 1776.